Hey, what's going on? This is Alex with Portland Event Films, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the custom build that we did for the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. I'm going to go over all the different components that we used, why we did some different design decisions, um, how I see this all working together. We also have a different audio setup that I'll cover, how that uh, gets incorporated with this setup here, um, all the different plates that we use, different components and why we chose to do everything that we did in this custom build. Hey, what's going on? My name is Alex with Portland Event Films and we own a live streaming company uh, in Portland, Oregon. Um, so I wanna cover our different setup. Why did the things that I did in this box? Um, so the first thing is why, why do a custom box? Why not just build one online? I had a hard time finding all the different components that I want in a custom build. I wanted my ATEM to be up. All the ones that I've seen are mounted down below. I'll cover why I don't think that's a good idea and kind of the different solution. And really my biggest thing is I needed something that looked clean, was very easy to set up and something that was gonna cut down on my setup time because as you can see, there's a lot of different components that are up above and then also uh, down below the platform. So let's start with the different components that I have. So the first thing that I have is a Pelican case. We went with the 1600. Um, this case is big enough to hold everything. It's not too compact. I feel that there's enough airflow uh, down below and it's just a nice, clean, sleek look uh, and just makes our setup time really, really smooth. So then we went with a 19 inch uh, HP computer monitor. This was a good choice because it is flush mounted to the back of this. I can close this hood down um, and not have to worry about this cracking or touching this. So it was a perfect size. Uh, the only thing I have to do to uh, close this all up is I have to remove the live view solo, our hard drive, and then our wireless video uh, transmission. So the next thing we picked up is a uh, Samsung one terabyte hard drive. It's a fast enough speed to be able to redo some ISO recordings uh, into it and a program feed out. From there, we have the live view solo. So we have a power supply that is down below. We have our video out that comes out, uh, it usually comes up this hole and then we'll plug into the side. And so that's how we can go from uh, the extreme ISO into the live view solo up to, usually YouTube is where we're uh, live stream streaming to, or we'll set up a custom RM2P. What we have underneath is we have a Furman power conditioner. We got the strip model cut off the end and you can see over here we have a uh, plate that gets flush mounted so that way we can just plug in an extension cord down below here you can see that we have two uh, xlr plates um, these plates get mounted in the in the back so it's going to go from xlr to quarter inch i wish this thing had a uh, quarter inch plugs on it but not much i can do there so we have our two xlrs and then we can run into our mixer most of the time we're just going to be running a mono signal from our mixer uh, into our uh, controller and that way we only have to worry about one microphone and then we have an additional microphone um, if we need for something else a lot of times where we're doing a live stream and we need to talk to the different people um, then we'll use the second microphone and we can just use a handheld microphone so that way we can talk to them and bypass the mixer for whatever we're doing on this end of the mixing setup and then we'll talk about the different wall plates so we have a sda wall plate over here and then uh, we can run two cameras. So when we have uh, lengths that are you know more than 50 feet, then we're gonna use the SDI plate. Now on the other side over here, we have uh, two HDMI connections. So that way we have the two SDIs, two HDMI. So that gives us four cameras. And then we have our wireless solution where we use the Hollyland Mars. I think this is a 400 and then we can use a wireless camera and so a lot of times we'll have a camera that needs to go across a walkway or it's on the other side of the room or we'll have a viewing room that's uh, opposite side of the building or through a wall and we can use this wireless transmission um, the latency is really good you can't tell switching between the cameras um, so we don't have to use too many wireless um, cameras but this comes in definitely in handy uh, when we're doing uh, bigger setups and we got to have a camera that is not stationary, gets moved around, has to go across a walkway. 
I don't want to tape cords down across the walkway. So that is a really good solution. Now, the biggest thing that I saw is I saw a lot of people mounting these flush on a plate. And I didn't want to do that for a couple of reasons. One, because this has vents on the side. It has a vent in the back. And I want airflow to be able to flow through this thing and come out the other side. And I don't want to create a bunch of heat underneath with all those electrical components. And I didn't want to have to put like fans in the side of this. And so then we also cut a strip in the back. So then that way we can have access to the extra HDMI ports that are on the back. Um, so if we have to swap out any cables or add any additional cameras, that makes it really easy. And then this is mounted up and it's easier to have access to the buttons as this is uh, recessed just a little bit to fit the lid and be able to close everything down. All right, so it's a little messy. I had to uh, move some stuff so I could flip the, the top up, give you a basic idea of what we have under here. So what we have here is we have our uh, SDI. So this is the converter where it converts from SDI, goes back into HDMI, and then it goes back up in under here see over here we have our uh, ethernet so we have one ethernet going in and then we go into our hub and then we have an ether another ethernet so this can go out to a, another computer this ethernet here is the one that goes to the computer so we can control the atem and then this one hooks into the atem so that way we're getting uh, internet in and that way we can stream directly from the ATEM out to the internet directly. Right here, what we have is our two XLRs. So that is the plate that is mounted down below. So that way we can go uh, XLR in our two different mics. Then this gets plugged into the back of the ATEM. Then from here, we have our HDMI cords and this converts it from the wall plate and this is our camera one and two. And then from there, we have the power supply for the uh, Live View Solo, which is going to be right here that always remains under here. But this powers everything underneath. And so you can see how many different ports and cords and things that we have down here and why this would be a uh, nightmare to try to set up every event. And then if you see here, we have a junction box. And this is what's getting our power in here and that's supplying everything. If you notice me personally, uh, I went in here and I uh, electrical taped all the different power supplies. So that way when in transport, I don't have to worry about some power supply coming loose. It's all uh, electrical taped together. So that way it holds everything. I use these little power adapters over here. So that way I can, instead of the power cords coming up and having to bend, they can lay down straight here. Then we just took some uh, aluminum angle iron and then we riveted it into the side and this is what the shelf sits on. So I'm gonna bring this top down so you guys can see what that looks like. So we'll take these, we'll pass this through here. So now we'll bring this down. Feed those cords through. And there, so that is your basic setup um, that keeps everything up here clean. And then I'll plug in my hard drive from here. Then if we're using the Live View Solo, we can put this, uh, put the Live View Solo on there. But usually I use this space to put my iPad for the different mixers. And that is pretty much the box setup um, from the custom build that we decided to do. So I'm gonna be writing a blog post on this. I will list all the different components, where to buy everything, the steps to build everything, uh, everything that's underneath down below. Um, if you guys have any more questions about it, uh, anything, that, how the process that I build everything, uh, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thank you guys for watching this video. My name is Alex with Portland Event Films.